Hi, and welcome to the Flex University presentation of the ABCDs of Medicare. And in a couple of slides, I'll inform you as to why we call this the ABCDs of Medicare. I'm your host, Joe Gladys, one of the sales consultants here at Flexible Benefit, and it's my pleasure to take you through today's presentation. But before we dive into the actual components of Medicare, it probably makes sense to take a little look into the history of Medicare. Back in 1945, the Medicare program was first proposed by then-President Harry Truman. But like most things in America, it tends to take a while to put these wheels into motion. And it wasn't until 1965 that Lyndon Johnson was able to sign the law into existence. So it took 20 full years before Medicare became a reality. And it pretty much chugged along for quite a while, pretty much as it was, until 1997 when Medicare Plus Choice plans were started under the Balanced Budget Act of 1997. A kind of redundancy here, but at the end of the day, then in 2003, the Medicare Modernization Act came into being under President George W. Bush. A couple of things happened here those Medicare Choice Plus plans became Medicare Advantage plans, what we now know as Medicare Advantage. And prescription drug benefit was added as well. Prior to 2003, there was little to no coverage for prescription drugs. All right, and the prescription drug component took effect in 2006. That's when all these standalone Part D prescription drug plans became available and many of your Medicare Advantage plans also include prescription drug coverage in the plan. All right, so who is eligible for Medicare? It's really pretty simple. Anybody age 65 and older, it's their health insurance. It's really as simple as that. Or anybody who's been deemed disabled by Social Security for 25 consecutive months. So you have to have 24 months of disability and on the first of the 25th month, you're automatically enrolled into Social Security. All right, so who governs our uh, Medicare benefits? It is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Studies, more commonly referred to as CMS, and you'll probably hear me use that term a couple more times. All right, they are responsible for governing the actions of Medicare, Medicaid, Medicare Advantage, the Part D prescription drug plans, and the Children's Health Insurance Program, not to be confused with the old CHIP high-risk uh, under-65 plans that we used to have in Illinois. This is a Children's Health Insurance Program. All right. Basically, all the marketing and information and materials about Medicare that are seen by the public must be approved by CMS. So anything that a carrier like Blue Cross or United Healthcare puts out there has to be approved by CMS before the public sees it. And the main function of CMS is to protect those who are eligible for Medicare, okay? Sometimes some of the rules and regulations seem a little contradictory. It's because they're trying to ensure the protection of the individual beneficiary as opposed to looking at the insurance companies or we as brokers and agents. So they're really trying to protect the beneficiary at the end of the day. That is their purpose for being. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how Medicare works. It's really no different than any other government program. We as the taxpayers pay our money into the systems of the government. The government then doles out that portion to the Medicare through CMS. CMS then makes the payments, whether it's directly to a doctor or a hospital or to a health plan sponsor like a Medicare Advantage plan. So that determines where the money goes and ultimately, it makes its way to us as the beneficiary to pay for our health insurance needs. Two terms that we need to keep straight when we're talking about this, and even myself, having done this for a long, long time, like sometimes we'll mix up these two words because they're so similar. So an easy way to do this is look at it. Medicare equals your health care. So it's care to care. It's your health insurance. It's your coverage. It's your plan to help take care of you. Okay, Medicaid equates to financial aid with your health care expenses. So it's aid for aid, Medicaid equals financial aid, and care for care. Medicare 
is to health care, whether it's original Medicare, whether it's a Medicare supplement, or whether it's a Medicare Advantage plan, those would all fall under the Medicare. All right, in Illinois, Medicaid is governed by, through the Illinois Department of Healthcare and Family Services. They are the state agency responsible for Medicaid benefits in Illinois. You will apply through your local Department of Health and Human Services. You can also find more information on how to qualify for Medicaid through the Medicare and You Handbook or at www.medicare.gov. So there's plenty of ways to find out information about Medicaid. All right, again, the reason we call this presentation the ABCDs of Medicare, because there are four components to current Medicare today. Part A is your hospital coverage, it's the big stuff. Part B is the medical coverage. Okay, those would be things like doctor's visits, testing lab work. Part A and Part B are what are commonly referred to as original Medicare. So if you hear anybody using that term original Medicare, they're referring to the government-sponsored Part A and Part B hospital and medical coverage. Part C combines your A and B together in what is now known as Medicare Advantage plans. By law, they have to cover everything that A and B does cover, but a private insurer takes over managing those benefits. Part D is your prescription drug coverage. Whether it's a standalone prescription drug coverage or whether it's in, included with your Medicare Advantage, Part D can be had by either of those two types of plan options. All right, so a little deeper on Part A again. It's the big stuff, it's the hospital insurance. Examples of covered uh, services would be your inpatient hospitalization, skilled nursing facility services. So you got released from the hospital, but you're not well enough to go home. So you go to a, a, an extended care facility that falls under skilled nursing. Home health care, because you still need some assistance at home, and sadly, if needed, hospice care. All right, your hospital benefits work like this for 2016. Of course, it has to be a Medicare-approved expense. Okay, cosmetic surgery, for instance, is not going to be a Medicare-approved expense. Okay, if you're hospitalized under original Medicare Part A, and your hospitalization is 60 days or less, you're going to have a $1,288 deductible up front. If you and it's a per occurrence deductible, meaning that if in March I get hospitalized due to an illness, in September I get hospitalized due to a car accident, I'm going to pay two separate deductibles. If my hospitalization extends beyond 60 days, up to 90 days, I'm gonna have a $322 per day copay. If that hospitalization extends beyond 91 days, up to 150, that copay doubles to $644. And if I'm in the hospital more than 151 days, the patient becomes responsible for 100% of the charges at that point. So you can see how under original Medicare, your costs can quickly add up and become very expensive. There is no cap here. All right, part B, medical coverage. Some examples here, your doctor's visits. Whether it's a primary care physician or a specialist, that's gonna be covered under Part B. Your medical supplies. Uh, so somebody who's a diabetic who needs various supplies, that's gonna be covered under there. Uh, your diagnostic testing, x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, fall under Part B. Outpatient therapy, outpatient mental health. Some of your preventative services fall under B. Your emergency services and your ambulance services also fall under Part B. Now, bears in mind that Part A is basically a guaranteed right for virtually all Americans. If you've paid into the system, if you pay taxes, most people get Part A automatically. Part B, however, comes with a premium and a deductible. All right, so let's take a look at how that works. All right, again, it has to be Medicare-approved expenses. Medicare is going to pay the first 80 percent. The beneficiary pays the next 20 percent. All right, so again, you can see how the cost can quickly add up. Again, there is that monthly premium, and there is a $166 annual deductible for your Part B services before the benefits kick in. All right, so let's take a look at the premium. 
If you're new to Medicare in 2016, that premium is going to be $121.80. If you were on Medicare prior to 2016, most people are grandfathered in at the old price, $104.90. Your premium will be deducted from your Social Security check. If you're not currently uh, taking your Social Security benefits, then you're going to receive a quarterly bill from Social Security. Okay, there are benefits available through the state medical programs, and that's going to vary by state, where your premiums may be covered based on your income and asset guidelines. So it's a sliding scale depending on what your income is and what your assets are. You may get help paying that Part B premium. All right, let's take a look at how the Part B premium works because there is an income-related component to the Part B premium. The more you make, the more you pay. So if you're a single person making $85,000 or less or a married couple of $170,000 or less, in 2016, as I mentioned, that Part B premium is going to be $121.80. If you're making more than $85,000 as an individual up to $107,000, or that married couple making up to $214,000, that Part B premium is going to go up to $170.50 and can go as high, depending on your income, as $389.80. Typically, every couple of years, the Part B premium gets adjusted, and obviously it never goes down. It's always going to go up a little bit. But for what you receive for that Part B premium, it's very, very reasonable. All right. So, as I mentioned here, with original Medicare, your Part A and your Part B here of Medicare, original Medicare is paying the first 80%. Well, who pays the other 20%? It's you, the beneficiary. So, Originally, many people would choose what was known as a Medigap plan or a Medicare supplement. There's a whole alphabet soup of Medicare supplement plans out there, ranging from Plan A all the way through Plan N. But in essence, one way, shape, or form, or another, those plans will cover the 20% that Medicare does not cover. But there's a premium for that. You have to pay for that. It's not just given to you. So depending on the plan type, Plan F being the richest, therefore the most expensive, depending on what that plan is, you're going to have a premium. The other thing is that premium is going to increase every year as you get older, just like our under 65 insurance did. All right, so that's Part A and Part B. Again, that's original Medicare. Okay, when you're on that original Medicare, you can stay on original Medicare. You don't have to add a supplement. You don't have to add a drug plan. It is highly recommended to add a drug plan, and when we get to Part D, I'll talk about that a little bit more. But at the end of the day, you don't have to do either. You can stay on original Medicare, but you can see there is risk involved in doing that, and it can be very substantial if you have a major claim. All right, so again, Part C is what we now know as Medicare Advantage plans. These are provided with private insurance companies that are contracted with Medicare. So they have to be approved by Medicare. Not every company out there can just say, hey, I want to be offering Medicare Advantage plans. It has to go through Medicare first to be approved. Again, by law, they must cover everything that original Medicare covers, and typically they're going to offer you additional benefits. Medicare actually pays a monthly fee to, for the beneficiary's care to the insurance carrier. Depending on where you are in the country, that amount's going to vary, but it starts usually around about $11,000 per year, so almost $1,000 per month. And it's now the insurance company's job to manage your care going forward. You never lose your rights to original Medicare, but the private insurance carrier takes over your benefits if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan. So they are responsible for paying everything directly to the doctor and the hospital. Under the original Medicare or original Medicare with a supplement, Medicare pays the first 80%, and either the beneficiary pays the other 20% or the supplement pays the other 20%. So there's two parties basically paying under original Medicare. Okay, with the Medicare Advantage plan, it's solely the insurance company's responsibility. That Part C plan is going to combine your hospital costs, your doctor costs, and your outpatient care into one plan. Okay? 
So again, by law, it has to cover everything the A and B covers. And in most cases, most of the plans here in Illinois will include your Part D prescription drug, drug coverage as well. Okay? The benefit or the advantage of a Medicare Advantage plan, if you will, is that they're going to offer additional benefits that you don't get with original Medicare. And in a moment, we'll talk about some of those benefits. Again, the key component here is that beneficiary will never, and I did say never, lose their Medicare benefits by joining a Medicare Advantage plan. You have the right to leave that Medicare Advantage plan and go back to your original Medicare benefits. Okay, so what are some of these additional benefits that you get on a Medicare Advantage plan? It's going to be things like the Silver Sneakers Gym Membership. Many of the plans offer Silver Sneakers. Some offer their own gym membership plans. And they are basically a free membership to places like the YMCA, Lifetime Fitness, Curves, and many, many more. Okay, you simply do a Google search, go to Silver Sneakers a website, put in your zip code, and it will bring up all the facilities nearby that you can go to as a member of Silver Sneakers. Okay. Many of these plans offer an over-the-counter benefit, either monthly or quarterly, where they literally are giving you free stuff. They're giving you a monthly or quarterly stipend to purchase things like allergy medication, aspirin, Band-Aids, vitamins, supplements, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, they offer transportation benefits for medically necessary visits. So as an elderly person who's no longer driving or has a medical condition that prevents them from driving at the moment, the, pr the plan will actually provide transportation. Again, medically necessary. They're not going to take the individual grocery shopping. Okay? Many of the plans have discounts available for hearing aids. Um, United Healthcare actually bought their own hearing aid company and has a tremendous benefit for hearing aids. Um, they'll offer dental and vision coverage. The plans will have a 24-hour nurse line. So you've got a medical condition, you think something's going on, but you don't think you need to run off to the hospital or in the emergency room or the urgent care. You have a nurse line. You can call and get advice about what's going on. They'll have meal planning services, and they have disease-specific counseling and care services. So somebody who's a diabetic or has cardiac conditions, they have specific programs set up to help people manage the care. Why do these Medicare Advantage plans offer these additional benefits? Because it's actually in their best interest to help you be healthier. Because the higher the star rating, these plans all get what's called a star rating from CMS, and the higher the star rating, five is maximum, the higher the star rating, the more money they get from the federal government. So I mentioned earlier that it works out to be about $1,000 a month that these plans receive. The better they help you maintain their health, your health, obviously the less they're going to pay out. So they know by offering you the Silver Sneakers Gym membership and keeping you active, you're probably going to have a healthier lifestyle. They're going to pay out less money, and you're going to live a better life. So it really is a win-win for everybody involved. The higher the star rating, the more money they get. And it's been proven clinically that you get the best patient outcome comes on Medicare Advantage HMO plans. The reason being is they have that vested interest in helping you manage your health care, and a big component of the STAR rating is how well the plan performs at helping you manage your health. So the better health, the more money the insurance carrier gets from Medicare. So it makes sense. Medicare supplements have no such built-in vested interest. They simply cover the 20% that Medicare doesn't cover. All right, so where does the money go? For every dollar paid into a Medicare Advantage plan, 87 cents goes towards the care and benefits of that plan. So the better, though, the insurance company does in managing your health and the less claims there are, the more profitable they are. So that's why it makes sense for everybody. Better patient outcome for you as the individual and the insurance company, if they're helping to manage your health, makes better money as well through these higher star ratings. So it, again, is a win-win for everybody in the equation. All right, the fourth part of the component, Part D, prescription drugs. All right, the exact coverage and cost of these plans is different for every Medicare drug plan out there. Currently in Illinois, we have 26 different drugs 
plans in 2016 available with 26 different formularies and 26 different premiums, 26 different copay plans and levels and coinsurance levels and all that good stuff that makes up a plan. Okay, all drug plans must offer at least a standard level of coverage as set by Medicare. So there's a certain level that they have to offer, but not every drug is going to be available on every drug plan. So it is absolutely critical that when you're working with a client that you get a list of their drugs and you run the analysis at Medicare.gov to figure out which is going to be the best drug plan for them. Because literally from plan one to plan two, it could be the difference of several thousand dollars out of pocket for that individual if they're on the wrong drug plan. Okay, there's a certain uh, standard of covering generics and brand name drugs. So they have to offer at least a couple of drugs in every category that's available. But again, they don't have to cover every single drug available out there in the marketplace. Okay, so this is a big deal. I can't emphasize enough that it is critical for our seniors that we run the drug analysis and find the right plan for them. Because oftentimes, for many of our seniors, their biggest month-to-month -month health expense is the cost of prescription drugs. That's all we've heard in the news for the last year is just exploding, escalating costs of prescription medications in this country. So this is a critical, critical thing that we provide as a service to our clients. All right? You can get your prescription drug coverage two ways. Your standalone prescription drug plan, which you can be used in combination with original Medicare or with original Medicare, Medicare supplement and a standalone prescription drug plan. Or, like I said, most Medicare Advantage plans today have that prescription drug plan built into it. Okay, and why is this a big deal? Five out of every six people, 65 and older, are taking at least one medication, and most are taking three or more. My record so far and all the time I've been doing this is 45 medications. So it's, it's you know, it can be crazy. Uh, but at the end of the day, most people, once they hit age 65, are taking medication. We need to help them find the right plan. All right, the other thing you need to keep in mind with Part D prescription drug plans is there is a late enrollment penalty. You are supposed to sign up. You don't have to, but when you first become eligible for Medicare, you should sign up for a Medicare prescription drug plan. Okay. The penalty itself is not severe. It's 10% of the average drug plan cost in the United States. Currently in 2016, that amount was $34.10 monthly premium. Multiplied by 10% is only 34 cents a month. So you say, hey, Joe, it's not a big deal. It's not that expensive. Okay, but that goes for every single month that you're not enrolled in a drug plan. And they can go back as far as 2006 when the drug law was first put in to law. So they can go back 10 years. So if you do the math, it ends up being about $42 can be added to the premium. Again, it's not a backbreaker necessarily, but it certainly is adding to their cost. The much bigger risk here is if somebody doesn't enroll in a drug plan when they first become eligible, and suddenly four or five months down the road, they get an awful diagnosis and they're suddenly on one of these medications that cost two or three or four thousand dollars a month. They don't have a drug plan. They can't simply call up their local broker. They can't call up a insurance carrier, and they can't call up Medicare and say, "I'd like to enroll in a drug plan." They're going to have to wait for the next annual enrollment period before they can enroll in a drug plan. So this is a big deal. It could cost them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So if you have somebody who says, I'm not taking any medications currently. I don't need a drug plan. The go-to plan in this instance right now, the least expensive plan in the state of Illinois is the Humana Walmart plan at $18.40 a month. Get them enrolled in that plan. It at least gives them protection. God forbid something happens and they need coverage. All right? Because, again, they cannot enroll until the annual enrollment period opens on October the 15th, and they will not have coverage effective until January the 1st. So they could go six, eight, seven, nine months, whatever it is, without having that drug coverage and risk lots of money. Don't let your client fall into that bucket. 
All right, something that you hear about when we talk about prescription drugs, the coverage gap, often referred to as the donut hole. It sounds scary, it sounds complicated, it's really not. What happens is in 2016, this is how it's breaking down. The prescription coverage gap begins when the beneficiary and the health plan together have paid a total cost of $3,310. So it's whatever the individual has paid in with their co-pays and co-insurance, plus what the drug manufacturer has paid in to reach that $3,310. Then you fall into what's commonly referred to as the donut hole. In the donut hole, you may pay full price for some brand and generic drugs, but usually what happens is you get a 55% discount on brand and a 42% discount on generic drugs. So your cost is significantly higher than prior to being in the donut hole, but you're not paying the full cost of the drug. But there are a few drugs that fall into the full cost category. So your expense increases while you're in the coverage gap. Once that individual's total out-of-pocket expense has reached $4,850, you come out of the coverage gap, and now you come to the other side where you go back to much lower cost for your prescriptions. For generics, it's going to be the greater of 5% of the cost of the drug or a 295 copay. For brand-name drugs, again, it's the higher of 5% or a $7.40 copay. So whichever is higher is what you'll pay. In 2020, this coverage gap goes away. Every year, the gap gets smaller. And in 2020, it will go away. So we're actually not that far away now from the coverage gap disappearing. All right, one other thing when we're talking about prescription drugs. There's a program out there called Low Income Subsidy. It's actually managed by Social Security, not Medicare or CMS often referred to here in Illinois as extra help. What is this program? It helps people pay for the cost of their Medicare prescription drugs. You must qualify to join the program. It's not available to everybody. There are certain income and asset guidelines, but these guidelines are higher than Medicare. Or excuse me, see, I just mixed it up. Higher than Medicaid. So somebody may tell you, I was declined for Medicaid, but they still may be eligible for Medicare. In fact, over 36% of Medicare-eligible people are eligible for the low-income subsidy, so more than one out of every three. And sadly, one in five that are eligible are not aware of it. So 20% of that population has no idea that they're eligible. That's about 10% of Americans have no idea they're eligible for this program, okay? The big component here is that low-income subsidy creates a year-round open enrollment. So people can change their plans every single month. They suddenly get prescribed a higher-cost medication that's not covered or has a high out-of-pocket on their current prescription drug plan. They can change the next month to a plan that covers it better. So this is a tremendous benefit for people. And it creates opportunity for us as brokers to help people get onto the right plan, and again, it's a non-stop open enrollment year-round. So this is a tremendous benefit. We've estimated just in the Chicago metro market, there's about 150,000 people eligible for the plan that have no idea they're eligible. So there's a lot of people that could use our help. How do you qualify for low-income subsidy? Well, you must be receiving Medicare. Your resources, meaning your assets, not your home, not your car, not your personal possessions, have to be less than $13,640 for an individual or $27,250 for a married couple. And your income has to be below $17,655 for an individual or $23,895. You say, well, Joe, that's not a lot. Again, 36% of all Medicare eligible people qualify for this program. So a third of our seniors fall below these guidelines. There's a lot of people that could use our help that don't know it. All right, let's take a look at the enrollment periods for Medicare Advantage and prescription drug plans. There's three basic types of enrollment periods. There's that initial enrollment period. I'm first turning 65. Okay, that's my initial enrollment eligibility for Medicare. 
There are special enrollment periods. Most of them are year-round special enrollment opportunities. Low-income subsidy, moving, leaving your employer sponsor plan at age 68 or 70 or 80, whatever age you are when you decide to stop working and come off the employer plan. And then there's the annual enrollment period, which is right around the corner. Every year from October 15th through December the 7th is the annual enrollment period. The federal government doesn't care what days of the week it falls on. It's right now always been the same period, October 15th through December the 7th. Taking a little closer look, the initial coverage enrollment period is when I'm turning 65 or that 25th month after being declared disabled by Social Security. And they give you a very large window to make that plan selection. Do I want a supplement? Do I want a Medicare Advantage plan? You have seven months to figure it out. Three months prior to your birth month, your birth month, and three months after. But during this initial enrollment period, you get to select one plan. So if you decide in May and your birthday's in June that you want a Medicare supplement, that's what you're going to have once you reach June 1st. But you wake up in July and say, geez, you know, maybe I should have gone with a Medicare Advantage plan. Too bad. You're stuck with it till the next annual open enrollment period starts on October the 15th. Now, special enrollment. These are for people who qualify for enrollment during special circumstances or situations such as moving into or out of a planned service area. So I moved from Florida to Chicago or I moved from Chicago to Arizona, whatever it may be. And with a Medicare Advantage plan, even moving from county to county can trigger a special enrollment because those plans are set up by county. And if you went from DuPage County to Kane County, there's a good chance that plan is different and would create a special enrollment. All right. Gaining or losing eligibility for Medicaid creates a special enrollment period. Just like the low-income subsidy plan, Medicaid creates a non-stop open enrollment for people on Medicaid, so they can change the plan from month to month. Qualifying, as we said, for low-income subsidy, special enrollment opportunity, year-round. Losing your employer-sponsored insurance coverage is actually a special enrollment period if you work beyond the age of 65. All right, I'm retiring at 68, I'm retiring at age 72. That's a special enrollment period where you'll have 60 days from the end of your coverage to enroll in a Medicare plan. If that plan is terminated for some reason, the carrier is no longer offering that particular plan, that creates a special enrollment period. And for those who are already on disability, when you turn 65, it actually opens up a new enrollment period just as if you're brand new to Medicare at 65. So it kind of starts the clock over again. All right, again, that annual enrollment period, October 15th through December the 7th. Okay, this is the opportunity for all Medicare beneficiaries to take a look at their options and decide what they want to do. Do I want to go from a supplement to a Medicare Advantage plan? Oh, I only had original Medicare and a prescription drug plan. Maybe I should get, add a supplement. Maybe I should add, maybe I should look at Medicare Advantage. This is the window of opportunity to look at the different plan options out there. The interesting thing, though, during this period is that literally from the 15th of October through December the 7th, you could put in a different plan every single day. And the last plan in the system at the close of business at midnight on December the 7th will be the plan you have starting January the 1st. So during that initial period, you only get one selection. During the annual period, you can change your mind every single day if you wanted to until December the 7th, and then that's your plan. All right, one other enrollment period to keep in mind is that from January 1st to February 14th of each year is the annual disenrollment period for people that want to disenroll from a Medicare Advantage plan. They wake up on January 31st and say, oh my God, I should have gotten a supplement, not a Medicare Advantage plan. They can disenroll from that Medicare Advantage plan, go back to original Medicare, and then pick up the supplement and add a drug plan. So just keep in mind that that disenrollment period runs through Valentine's Day. After Valentine's Day, beginning on the 15th, 
you're now locked into your plan for the rest of the year. So really, there's kind of two components to this lock-in period. During the annual enrollment period, beginning on December the 8th, you are locked into that plan until October the 14th of the next year. But you do have that special disenrollment period from January 1st to Valentine's Day if you decide, oh my God, I've made a mistake, I need to switch plans. After the 14th of February, you are locked in until the end of the year, until the next open enrollment period starts October the 15th, and then your new plan starts on January the 1st. All right, so let's, let's wrap things up here by taking a look at a summary of Original Medicare. Again, Original Medicare pays the first 80%, the beneficiary pays the next 20%. Part A has that $1,288 deductible. So basically, with Original Medicare, you have unlimited expenses. There's no cap, there's no ceiling. All right. Most people get their Part A automatically upon turning 65, but you do need to enroll in Part B, especially for those who are continuing to work. You actually have to contact Social Security. Today, most people, when they get Part A and they get their Medicare card in the mail, there's actually a box on the back to check if you do not want to enroll in Part B. And if you're on a group plan that has 20 or more employees, it does not make sense to start paying for Part B yet because remember it has that $121.80 premium because your group plan is primary. If it's a small group of under 20, actually Medicare becomes primary so you need your Part B and the group plan becomes secondary. So that's a key component here. Large group plans do not enroll in Part B until you actually leave the group plan but if it's a small group plan, you need to be enrolled in B. All right, you don't have to, but you should add a prescription drug plan. Again, because of the risks associated with that. So you can have original Medicare and just add a drug plan. But if you want to cover that 20%, add a supplement. The benefit of original Medicare, there's no networks involved. If the hospital or doctor accepts a Medicare assignment, and virtually all do, it's 99.5% out there do, there's no network involved. You can go see anybody who accepts it. All right, so part two of this is the Medicare supplement. All right, I don't want to risk paying 20% of a half a million dollar open heart surgery. I want to make sure that that's covered for me. I'm going to add a Medicare supplement to cover that 20% risk. Just like the original Medicare, because Medicare supplements work in conjunction with original Medicare, there's no network restrictions. If I want to go to the Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic, or I want to go see some specialist in Florida because he's the best at hip replacements, I can go see that doctor with my Medicare supplement. A Plan F is a Plan F regardless of the carrier. The premium may vary from carrier to carrier, but the plan will always be exactly the same. So these plans are portable. You can take them anywhere in the country. You've got a couple who's retiring and buying that RV and going to go travel the country and go to all those places they never got to while they were working and raising their kids. A supplement's a great option because they don't have to worry about networks. They can go anywhere and get services. All right. You must have Part A and Part B, though, if you're going to purchase a Medicare supplement plan. All right. And again, you should add that prescription drug plan. Supplements don't include prescription drugs you need to add a standalone prescription drug plan. All right, the downside of that supplement is your premiums are going to increase every year. Just like our under 65 insurance, premiums continue to go up as we get older, and most Medicare supplement plans are medically underwritten. During that initial enrollment period, they are guaranteed issue, but after six months of your 65th birthday, they're no or leaving the group plan, they're no longer guaranteed issue, and you are subject to medical underwriting. So if you had a Medicare Advantage plan for five years and suddenly decided you wanted a Medicare supplement, you are subject to Medicare, uh, medical underwriting. And most carriers, if you've had major conditions, are probably going to decline you. We are actually very fortunate here in Illinois that Blue Cross Blue Shield does not medically underwrite their supplements. So we have the ability to get anybody a supplement. I had a client back in December who was dying of pancreatic cancer, and Blue Cross Blue Shield took him, no questions asked. Unfortunately, I lost him in the middle of February, but for those six weeks, they happily paid his bills 
no questions asked, no waiting periods, nothing. All right, so we're lucky to have Blue Cross in the state with that guaranteed issue because all the other carriers in the space will medically underwrite somebody outside of the initial enrollment period. The benefit of the Medicare supplement is typically the client doesn't see a bill. They're going to cover all Medicare approved expenses. Again, it has to be a Medicare approved expense. You want a new nose because you never liked your nose, that's not going to be covered. All right, wrapping up the Medicare Advantage plans. Again, it's a private insurance company that has taken over your benefits. They are responsible for paying out to all the providers. But in the Medicare Advantage plan, you have to use the carrier's network. So if you have a Blue Cross Blue Shield Medicare Advantage plan, you have to use the Blue Cross Blue Shield Medicare Advantage network. If you have a United Healthcare plan, you have to use United Healthcare's network. Same thing for any other carrier in the space. Again, as I mentioned earlier, your best clinical outcomes, your best patient care come with these Medicare Advantage plans because they have a vested interest in you being healthier. They're going to call you up and say, hey, Mr. Jones, I see it's time for your annual physical. Have you gotten that scheduled yet? Oh, Mr. Jones, I see that you have diabetes. We have programs to help you with that, so on and so forth. They have a vested interest. Again, you must have both Part A and Part B to have a Medicare Advantage plan. Most plans are going to include the prescription drug coverage. Okay, again, they have to cover everything that original Medicare covers. The difference with a Medicare Advantage plan is most, many of the HMO plans are actually $0 premium. There are PPO plans that are out there as well. They're going to come with a premium. And the difference between a supplement is a supplement, you pay that premium up front regardless of how much you use it. A Medicare Advantage plan is pay as you go. So they have a cap on your expenses for the year, ranging in our market anywhere from $2,900 to a maximum of $6,700, depending on the plan type and design. So, but it becomes very difficult to actually hit the maximum out of pocket on a Medicare Advantage plan. Why? Because they have very reasonable co-pays for your services. $5 for a primary care physician, $35 for a specialist, your hospitalization is typically capped between five and seven nights maximum, and your copay is usually somewhere between $200 and $250. So you're in the hospital three nights for a hip replacement, and you have a $250 nightly copay. For $750, everything is covered. So you need a lot of different things to go wrong in a year in order to hit that maximum out of pocket. And in fact, only 4% of plans nationally max out each year. So most people never come close to hitting their Medicare Advantage out-of-pocket maximum. So for most people out there today, they can save significant amounts of their retirement nest egg by having a Medicare Advantage plan versus a supplement plan or being on original Medicare. There are significant savings. And this is a big and real concern today because as you, people are living longer, people are living healthier, and the biggest concern is, oh my God, am I going to outlive my retirement nest egg? So an Advantage plan is a great way to help people save money. For those that it's not an objective, they're very well off financially, they have the right to look at it either way. But for a lot of people, many of our Medicare recipients are living on that fixed income. This is a major concern. All right, so to wrap it up, why should I, as an agent, get involved in the Medicare market? Well, it's really simple. At the end of the day, the biggest opportunity in American healthcare is Medicare. Okay, we all know in the under 65 market, right now, heck, we're not even getting paid for special enrollment enrollments. Hopefully, we're going to get paid during the open enrollment period, but nothing is guaranteed. The great opportunity out there right now is Medicare. Tremendous opportunity in Medicare. Why? I think everybody knows today that the baby boomer population is turning 65 at an unprecedented level. Depending on whose numbers you look at, it's somewhere between 11 and 12,000 people per day in America turning 65 every single day. If you look at where we're at on this graph currently, the top line represents age 65 and over. And if you look at coming down to the bottom, in 2016, 
draw a line up, you can see we're right at the beginning of the explosion of the Medicare population in America. By 2020, one in five Americans will be 65 or older. The bottom line illustrates what I said a moment ago. People living to be 85 and over is also growing at a tremendous rate. So they're outpacing what they thought they were going to need in their retirement years because people are living longer, they're living healthier. So there's no mystery, it's no, you know, it should be no surprise to anybody that we have this tremendous amount of people turning 65 in America. Diving down into the Illinois market, we have about almost 2,000 Medicare beneficiaries in the state of Illinois and about 1.1 million of those right here in Chicago Metro alone. Uh, this number is actually a little bit outdated. It's about 420 people per day turning 65 in Illinois currently, and about 245 of those are in the Chicago Metro market. In Illinois, 28% of the population is on a supplement, 14% of the population is on a Medicare Advantage plan, but that has grown tremendously over the last three or four years. Around the country, Medicare Advantage is now outselling Medicare supplements on a two-to-one ratio. So two out of every three people choose a Medicare Advantage plan over a Medicare supplement. In my own personal book of business, almost 80% of my clients choose Medicare Advantage, and all I do is educate them on the options. It's not my job to tell them which plan to enroll in. They pick the plan that best suits their needs. All right, and here is the slide that if this doesn't drive it home for you, especially in today's marketplace, where not only are we not being paid during the special enrollment period, but how drastically have our commission levels been cut in the last six or seven years in the individual market? It's harder and harder to make a living in that marketplace. This is the opportunity. Our commissions actually in Medicare are increasing, not decreasing, not going away, not being taken away. And with Medicare Advantage and prescription drug plans, CMS dictates what we get paid. They have to pay us. And we get paid very well. We get paid far better than the individual market. Supplements. The carrier does have discretion on how they pay you. So there is some discretion in there on Medicare supplements. But on drug plans and Medicare Advantage, you get paid what you're worth. We get paid for going out and helping people, and we get paid pretty well. Okay? At the end of the day, it breaks down to first-year commission on a Medicare Advantage plan. Right now, currently, this year is $429. For 2017, it goes up to $443. Your renewal commission for life is half that amount. So as long as that individual is still with us, you continue to get paid. Prescription drug plans, currently at $63 first year commission, next year $71. And again, the same rule, you get half upon renewal. So you get paid. The supplement plans get to determine how they pay you on renewal as well. Many have gone to now paying for life as well because of the disadvantage they have against Advantage plans. But at the end of the day, please, if this doesn't drive it home for you, think about these numbers. For every 185 Medicare supplements written today in America, one is written by an agent. One written by an agent. For every 2,250 drug plans, one is currently written by an agent. For every 4,090 Medicare Advantage plans, one is written by an agent. Who's writing the rest? They're either going to Medicare.gov and enrolling directly from Medicare.gov, or it's already started. Every time you turn on your computer and go into the internet, those banner ads are popping up. United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Humana, Aetna, they all want to be your friend with operators standing by to take your call. I don't know about you guys, but I want a piece of this pie. I, I'm a fond of saying I've put one through college. I've got two more to go. Joe needs some of this Medicare Advantage money to help put those kids through college. Okay, so think about this. If those 12,000 people a day, if they all enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, of course, that's not going to be the case, but two-thirds of them are. So 8,000 people a day are enrolling in a Medicare Advantage plan. But if it was 12,000, that means over $5.3 million of commission is being left on the table every day by you guys. 
Again, I don't know about you, but I need a piece of that 5.3 million to get my kids through college. I'm going to make sure I get a piece of the pie. So you got to get in the game. You got to get contracted with the carriers. You got to get certified. Now is the time to do it. Open enrollment is coming right around the corner. If this doesn't drive it home for you, not only is the market underserved, we don't have enough agents out there helping. We know we have this aging population of, a, of individuals turning 65, but our broker base in Illinois is also aging right along with them. So we actually have less agents out there over time to help these people. So there is a huge upside and a huge opportunity. I hope you take advantage of it. This market is here for us. So if you have any questions, you want to get into the Medicare game, reach out for us. We are here to help. The whole reason Flexible Benefits is here as your general agency is to help you get into the game and take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and listen to this and have a great time out there selling. This market is a tremendous, fun opportunity. Take advantage of it. Thank you so much.